Mike Perry, you fought in your in the in in the U.S. for most of your career. Do you like these opportunities to to travel overseas, such a a long distance to come to Uruguay and a new place and to to, to fight it? Or would you you do rather to to fight in the U.S. most of the time? Um, you know, I I don't know and I don't care. I'm here to make money. I'm here to fight for money and uh, to win and uh, further my career. Coming overseas, I've I've done a couple of times. It was good experiences and. Mostly, I think it takes pressure off of me. Uh, fighting at home, I'm like, oh, I got to represent for America. Coming here, same in a way to represent for my country, but I feel like the environment could be more hostile and in a, a crazier mindset to be more focused on how to fight uh, protected and to defend myself better and to use the point system to go out there and get the win. He's not from Uruguay, but he's from South America. Do you feel like this is his home now in this fight? Yeah, I believe, um, you know, he wanted to be on this card. I wasn't uh, necessarily at home saying, oh, UFC put me on UFC Uruguay. And I saw, you know, he, he wanted this fight and he wanted it here. I've come all this way to meet him in the country he wanted to fight in, now he's gonna have to meet me in the middle of the cage. Does that make you feel uh, more excited to fight him here since he asked for this place to come here and beat him here? Yes, and, and he is a good opponent, meaning I think he's going to come to fight me and I don't get a lot of that. Usually guys run and they, they play the points very well, which has made me play them much better so um, I'm looking to see how skilled he is, and I hope he brings it. I, w I was looking at your social media on your Instagram stories, and you posted a video saying that you hope his wake up goes terribly, and yes. he feels like shit. <laughs> what? Why? Why do you think? Do you hope that for him? Because I hope he misses weight, and I get some of his money from his purse. And when I make weight, you know, and I'm here, and I have to make weight. I have to suffer. I hope he's suffering. This shit kills me every time. I hate this shit. I get tired of this shit every time I do it. I'm so tired of cutting weight. I meet, I'm gonna meet Darren Till at 185 for the first, our first middleweight fight. Do you think like your next fight is gonna be a middleweight? You regard as a Darren, Darren, Darren Till or not? No, I'm just talking shit because I'm too small. I was 180 when I got here, but I just, I cut different. And, um, you know, I get on weight. It's not cut weight for me. It's get on weight. These guys are going to get the sauna and hot tub tonight, cut 15 pounds tonight. I don't know how they do that. Maybe they're more hydrated or something. But um, I do it my way, how boxing coaches taught me. And we get on weight. We get used to the body weight. And I'm going to be way faster than Luke, and that will show in the fight if he's cutting too much weight tonight. Luke is one of those nice guys that don't do this any talk before or after fights, do you think that you, you, you doing that is maybe trying to, to get in his skin and maybe try to make him make mistakes in the fight? No, um, I'm talking less these days and, and I do respect these guys in the top 15 and, and uh, you know, I respect what Luque has been able to do in his five fight win streak and I like it because I'm going to take it from him and show that, you know, I could have had a five fight win streak too, but I've feel that I've fought tougher opponents and you know I just I just messing with him a little because try to have some fun with this you know it's a job that we have to go in there and work and and he trains in South Florida and I train in Florida and he's he's friends with Gilbert Burns and I like Gilbert Burns and he's coming to 170 now you know and I meet these guys and I end up fighting some of these guys that I met and it's just a mindset of you know life or death that we like to think when we go in to fight and it's protect yourself at all times and you, or you could get hit hard and have a brain injury and suffer suffer problems in life so you know it's it, there are mean moments and you know Luke is he seems a nice guy but we're here to do a job and that is to beat the shit out of each other it's interesting that you brought it up. Like you said, you've been talking a little less. I, I did sense that as well because you usually have a very 
out there personality. And Loki, he's sort of the opposite. And a lot of people have been pointing it out that it's it's such an interesting contrast uh, of styles between you guys. Do you kind of see that too? Um, you know, I don't know if he if he's posting anything. And and lately, I've been paying less attention to my opponents. Yeah. I don't care to see what they're doing. I don't want anybody telling me, oh, they think that they're training this or they're going to try this. It's MMA. They're going to try everything. And I know that in the back of my head every day when I train. So I focus more on what I'm going to do. And that my name is signed on the contract. The UFC is going to pay me. I have fans. And, you know, and I remember what I got into martial arts for was to be a respectful martial artist. I respect a very high-level black belt who is who is so skilled in his mind, he just stays calm and, and doesn't need to. It's like the meme, it says, a lion doesn't need to tell you it's a lion. Yeah. And that's cool too, and, and it's a balance, because I still want to say funny things and get yeah. people intrigued in the fight. So, like, you know, I hope your weight cut's going bad, because I'm <laughs> suffering too, so fuck you, motherfucker. This shift that you're talking about of just sort of like staying away from what your opponent is doing and sort of keeping to yourself a little bit more, is it something that you like sort of like consciously decided like, no, I'm going to start acting this way at this point? Or is it something that just naturally happened with the progression of your career? Yeah, I think it's just happened over time. Um, I'm getting older and wiser I'm calming down. Can't stay a young, aggressive kid forever. And that's just true, and um, I'm becoming a more, you know, wise martial artist, and it's just happening. But also, on weight cut, it's very easy to be calm. As soon as I get some food on fucking Friday, <laughs> I'm going to be all amped up and ready to go. Uh, something I talked about with Luki, but uh, welterweight, it's such a difficult division. It's very tricky because it's super stacked, and you have guys like him or like Leon Edwards or like uh, Eliseu Zaleski. They're on these huge winning streaks, and you still don't know when they're going to fight for a title or because it's just hard to gauge what's going on, right? How is it for you, like, as an athlete in the division to sort of, like, plan your career when you're in the division that seems so difficult to break through? I just started planning i came in and thought that i was it was going to be different and um i was just saying uh that last night i was saying because i was in a room talking with ponzinibbio and Adolfo vieira and i was saying man can you believe that when i fought ponzinibbio i didn't even know what a unanimous decision was i made that video and i said i didn't think it was unanimous I thought that it was like by rounds and it's no, it's by judges. So I've come a long way and I've made it this far without knowing really what I was doing. So now that I have an idea of how I should do this, really sit back and watch the division kind of handle itself and see where I can get in and get a fight that makes sense for me and my skill set and their skill set to go up against each other. And, um, you know, that starts with the, the fight this weekend against Luque, and I think our skill sets should be fun. In terms of the contrast in the cage, what he said when we talked was kind of like, he knows you're an aggressive fighter. He says, I, I've seen technical evolution in him, but he's like more of a, an aggressive, like in your face type fighter. I'm more like of an analytical counter attacker. Is that how you read the fight too? Um, you know, I believe we're very similar in some ways. Um, I, I believe my boxing is better, and I'm just looking to show that. Um, I believe he's fought people who haven't had the great striking of the opponents that I have fought against. And, you know, um, lots of boxing and, and grappling now so now I, I mix it all in all all these years I've been trying to find the balance between you know training uh, strength and conditioning and preparing my body as well as doing the martial arts and all the time it seemed it was one or the other and this time I found a way to balance all of it 
my strength and conditioning has mostly been grappling and boxing. So now my hands are up, my shoulders are protected, my body is moving properly, rather than if I trained running around a track for a month to get my cardio right. This time I have cardio from doing martial arts and a little bit of swimming. So, you know, I believe I found a great balance. And like I said, it's Saturday, you're gonna see. You've been a, uh, a brawler most of your career, just going there and standing and training, but you've been training with Jacare Souza for a while now, and now you have Rodolfo Vieira in the gym, and you just had a grappling match in Orlando, right? How, are, we, are, are we going, going to see one day Mike Perrin going for, for a takedown and going to grapple in the, in the octagon? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think I'm one of the best strikers in the world when I mix in takedowns. I grab your legs and I get guys to put their hands down. And, and be scared of that takedown. And then the punches just come so easy to the face. Um, and you know, when he says brawling, uh, he's one of the best technical brawlers that's ever stepped foot in the octagon. So, you know. How do you envision just, just this fight going down? Me hitting him whenever, wherever I want, not getting hit by him, ups and downs, lefts and rights, faking him out. Poking him, pointing, out pointing him, and walking him into big shots, looking for the KO. Before I let you go, you were tweeting about Mickey Gall uh, last week during the fight, and he wasn't very happy to 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 read you you to to hear that that you called him green, and said that if you get past Luke, he would like to fight you next. Why why why, why were you so interested in tweeting that about him? And is that a fight that interested you? Uh, I have been tweeting on. Um, UFC fight nights the past few weeks it kind of it was like it looked it got pretty popular on my Twitter so I made sure that I just like to say some things about the fight publicly and um, yeah that fight interests me I uh, believe it'll be an easy win after Luke but um, you know I got some things to go do after Luke I'm gonna get back to the gym when I can but first um, going to have a marriage ceremony with my fiance Danielle and then we're going on our honeymoon in Greece and I'm gonna get drunk and fat and then I'm gonna have to come back to the gym and lose some weight and then I'll think about fighting. Congrats on that but also on your, on your tweet you didn't shy away from, from tweeting about Kobe Covington and I'm gonna read to, to, to quote exactly what, what, you, what you said. You said he did too much cocaine uh, in Miami and had surgery for deviated septum and that he punches like a female dog 600 swats from those pool noodles that kids play with. I guess we weren't surprised with his win over Robbie Lawler. Yeah, um, whatever. I, I don't think he punches with any power. He never, he never explodes. And, uh, you know, if I hit someone 600 times, it might be the first death in the octagon. And, you know, it only takes, you know, 60 for me. So 10% of what Kobe did, if I did 10% of that, I smash him. Do you, do, you, do you think he has what it takes to, to, beat, to, to beat Usman? Yeah, it's a good fight. Uh, it's two wrestlers. I see the sport in a different light these days, and the, that light is, I see it as wrestling first. You have to um, subdue what these guys want to do, which is either get the takedown or shy away from you run and then get into the clinch and try to get the takedown, get on top of you, install time. That's what they want to do. And I've been working many ways on how to shut that down and open up my own game of striking.